Well, hello there, Minecrafters. Thanks for coming by and welcome back to Comment to Command. That's a series where you guys have left questions in the comment sections to any of my videos asking how do I do this in Minecraft and I do my best to answer it or figure it out and then show you guys how you can do it. And this could be as simple as how does this one command work to as complicated as how do I make this contraption for my map. If I can figure it out, I'd love to show you guys. So this time we're going to be looking at two comments and that's mostly because they're the same question. But uh, uh, first one from Lample3 asks, when a player clicks on a sign that will execute a command, is there a way instead of using the command block to kill the player? <laughs> so he wants to know how to kill the player using uh, signs. And then uh, Richter channel asks, how do you make a sign when you right click it, you give an item or you teleport the player or you say something in the chat? Basically, we want to know how to make clickable signs. So I'm going to take it a step further and show you guys how to create the signs with the command blocks, how to add text, color, bold, all the text formats, and then show you how to execute the commands by clicking on the signs. And as always, the commands are in the description, guys, so you can copy and paste them. But let's begin here. First things first, if you didn't know this, signs are actually blocks. Now, they don't look like blocks. Definitely don't look like blocks. They're not cuboid like these uh, sea lanterns or these quartz blocks. A lot smaller. But in terms of Minecraft and command blocks, they are considered blocks. Now, if I press F3 and I look at this one, you see it says standing sign. That's the name of that actual sign block. And if I look at the other one, it's called the wall sign. So you've got a choice between the standing sign and the wall sign. There's no block that's actually called sign. So just keep that in mind in your own projects. You got to determine which one works better for you. So the first one here, this uh, standing sign, the way we uh, make that command, because it is a block, we use a set block command and we issue that one block above the command block. These are relative coordinates. So wherever the command is being executed, in this case, it's off the command block or one block above, we're going to set block the standing sign. All this capitalization is very important and it has a damage value of eight. So if I press this, we have a sign facing us. If you look at F3, rotation eight, that's why I have that damage value. If I change that to something else like a five, you'll see it has a different uh, rotation there. So depending on where you want that sign to face, keep that in mind as well. So the wall sign is basically the same thing. We have set block wall sign zero because it's on the back. I've got the replace there. Uh, it's interesting what it does because if I have a block there, it just swaps it out if it's replaced. If you have a destroy, um, this is kind of cool. If you have a sign there or whatever block it is, it'll burst it out. And if you have tile drops on, you'll actually get, uh, drop the item. So I usually keep it on replace. And uh, as I said before, keep in mind your damage value because if you have the wrong value, like three, uh, you'll see it comes out the wrong place and then it pops off. So the wall signs are pretty impor important to have that. In this case, they are zero. So that's basically the bare bones of how you set block a sign. Okay, so now we want to add some text. So now we're gonna get a little more complicated. Uh, we've got the same structure here, zero, replace, and now we've got this MBT stuff. Now, this is this looks a little complicated, uh, but it is repetitive here. So text one is the first line, and if we look up here, we've got add, sum, and then a blank line, and then text. So if we wanted to copy that, our first line here, we've got text one, colon, quotation, square bracket, and then a curly bracket. Inside this curly bracket, starting at this backslash, this is where we put all of our text stuff, all of our text formatting and all that sort of thing. So we have backslash quote, text, backslash quote, colon, backslash quote. This is where we put what we want to write. So add and then backslash quote. And then our second line down is text two. So sum and always remember backslash quote in this sort of thing. Keep that going through your mind because you're going to see how that works out with everything. So text four. Uh, we have a blank line on text three, text four, we've got, I think it said text, I believe. So let's add text. And then we issue this command. We've got add some blank text. That's how that basically works. So same thing with the color. So we've got uh, red here. Same thing with the color here. We've got the second line down says red. So if I issue that, boom, we've got red, but it's not the actual color red. So we add that with the backslash quote method that I like to call it. So we add a comma, so we know we're adding a new thing, backslash quote, and then color, spelt American, backslash quote. You got that word set in the backslash quotes. 
colon, then backslash quote, red, backslash quote, and then you're done with that. Whatever line it's on, that's the color it's going to be. We want to change it to like line four. If we want to put something else there, we could put, uh, let's say, green. And then after we have our quotation, we put our comma, backslash quote, color American, backslash quote, uh, colon, backslash quote, and then green, backslash quote. Remember that, remember that backslash quote always go through your mind. Hit that, and now we've got green on the bottom there. So there's a list of colors that I've got in the description. It's not every color in the book, but it's got, uh, you can pretty much do a lot of different colors with these signs. So now we want to make it bold. So the way we do that, the same kind of format, um, what did I have, bold on the second line down? So yeah, bold on the second line down. So we go to text two, second line down, we've got bold ready to go. After the quotation, comma, backslash quote, bold in lowercase, backslash quote, colon, backslash quote, and then we want to put the word true, backslash quote. That's going to mean that we have now bold text. And then same with italic here. You can see I've got italic ready to go. Same sort of th same sort of thing. Comma backslash quote italic in lowercase backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote. And then now uh, we've got our font there in italic. And then same with underlined. I've already got this one set up. I think. Uh, oh, maybe I don't. So let's add it in. Colon or comma backslash quote underlined it's not underlined it's underlined backslash quote uh, colon uh, backslash quote <laughs> true backslash quote and I think that one is there we go ready to go strike through is another one it goes through it like that so uh, just like that strike through lowercase backslash quote colon backslash quote true same sort of th same sort of thing just like that and then a lot of people love this obfuscated thing same th layout as the uh, as the other text formats we have backslash quote obfuscated backslash quote colon backslash quote true if you put it the false obviously it takes it away but uh, just like that you got that funky changing font sort of stuff like that it really doesn't matter what you write as the text I could write uh, I could write uh, you know but whatever that spells and when we replace it See, it just changes those those things over. So if you're doing a obfuscated, you don't really necessarily need it. Just does have the same amount of digits of whatever you type in there. Okay, so that is basically how you do text formatting and coloring and uh, color and text formats. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, links are in the description so you can copy and paste. Now we want to know how we do these clickable things. If I click this, it has a say command. It actually says my name because I clicked it. So what I've got over here is just this long command here. I'm not even really going to go through it. I'm just going to copy and paste it over. But it's the same thing. So we go over to this here. We had text line, text to uh, right here. We had click a bull. And again, after the quotation, we have our comma. Now I've already got the comma in my copy command. So I'm going to control V, paste it in. And you can see after the uh, after the clickable we had the the backslash quote comma and then backslash quote and we have all these little words here click event action run command value every word is separated with backslash quote and then we put our command right here so in this case we're going to do a say command so I'm going to say uh, if I can spell properly click uh, bull and backslash quote and then if I issue that one, I should be able to click on that. And you can see here, that's what we want to do. So if we want to kill the player by clicking on a sign, uh, we could say we have in here, we have a kill at P. That's the nearest player to the, the uh, sign. And we want to say something like uh, um, don't touch. So now we've got a sign that says, don't touch. If they touch it, oh, they die. They die. So that is how you, you kill a player with a sign. And any command we want to put in there, we can just change it over. It actually doesn't matter where you put that click event command. It can go at the end of text four, the, the lower line. It doesn't matter where it goes. Whatever they click on it, it's going to issue that command. 
So finally, this last one here, what we are going to do is we are going to combine everything that we have learned already and we're going to create this sign. And I haven't cheated, I've got a blank sign here, but we're going to create this one up here that's already set to go. So the top line here we have obfuscated with a strike through in it. And it doesn't really matter what we put in there, but uh, we'll just write something like Q is a weirdo and we'll get rid of that and so after here we have a comma backslash quote and remember we have strike through and then we have backslash quote colon backslash quote and we want to put true backslash quote and then we want to put another comma we will put backslash quote and obfuscated backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote and that should do our top line so there we go it's a little bit longer on here but that's all right next we have set lime wool so on text two the second line down we want to write the words set lime wool and uh, we'll just go to the backslash and remember after the quote we have a comma we have backslash quote and color backslash quote and colon backslash quote and I think that's dark green I believe backslash quote and then another comma backslash quote and we want to have it bold backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote and that should be our second line there set lime wool looks good so far under you is underlined and bolded so text three we have under you if I could spell properly and then uh, comma backslash quote underlined backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote comma backslash quote bold backslash quote colon true backslash quote uh, see I missed it there that would have messed up the so we got to have all the words inside the backslash quotes so I believe there we go under you and then another obfuscated line now it looks like it's in italic so last line here we just need to put but you are weirder weirder there we go okay and then after the quotation we have comma backslash quote uh obfuscated backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote comma backslash quote uh it was italic italic backslash quote colon backslash quote true backslash quote now remember we need to make it clickable so let's just see if i had it right oh there we go we have it right and we need to add this in here so i'm going to copy and paste Control c and we already have the comma in it and as i said we can put it anywhere we're going to put it on the fourth line so after this quotation i'm going to Control v paste and we want to put lime wool under us. So what we do is we add an execute command, execute at the nearest player, at their location, set block, um, one block below, there we go, wool, and then lime is I think five. So we're gonna execute at the player, at their location, set block, one block below, lime wool and it ends with a uh, backslash quote there i'm not sure if i have to have a space there or not let's just get rid of that space so if we replace that hopefully this will work that spot right there should turn to lime wool and it did so very good very good hopefully you guys know how to make clickable signs with different colors and bold and formats and all that sort of stuff if you have any questions about anything be it this a new command or how to do this in my map, feel free to leave it in the comments. We'll make another episode. We'll try to figure out some stuff together. But thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your Minecrafting and have a great day.